Welcome on out to Athens. It's finally the week that we feel like we've been waiting for the entire season. Georgia versus Alabama this upcoming week in the SEC championship game. And Roddy, the first question that head coach Kirby Smart was about the guy that you've been saying for a long time was going to give Georgia problems if they had faced off. Jalen Milrow, the quarterback over at Alabama, um, played well over the weekend, got them to a win in that last second against Auburn. What a play. I mean, <laughs> what kind of player is he? And what was maybe your reaction to the fact that they talked about him so much at the press conference today? Well, he's the most dangerous threat. Now, you have Caleb Downs, you know, the fantastic freshman of safety for them. You have Dallas Turner, who just, you know, destroys offensive lines and makes tackles. Very good defense. But what makes Alabama tick, what won them on a fourth and 31, is Jalen Milrow. This guy is, uh, I said it in week one, I'm like, that is the most dangerous player in America. And I know he got benched later on, which I thought was a moronic move. But I'm like, this guy, because you just see when he decides to take off, a lot of guys scramble. You know, hey, there's nothing open. You're running around, and he takes off. When he leaves, he looks like Usain Bolt coming out of the blocks. He just takes off at lightning speed, and he's big. He has huge thighs. He's tough to tackle. He's just an absolute nightmare for opposing offenses. I mean, opposing defenses. And it took Alabama a while to figure out how to use him correctly. Now he's comfortable. Uh, they're uh, comfortable in the offense. They run with him. And it's just dangerous. As you can see, you can get them in fourth and 31, and they can beat you. So what is Kirby Smart going to talk about? A dangerous running quarterback who can also great long balls. So mm -hmm. uh, he was able to beat Auburn. And this is a guy who's won them a lot of games. Alabama's one of the hottest teams in America right now. What is Georgia's weakness? We saw this this past Saturday, running quarterbacks. So it, you could see why Kirby focused on Jalen Milrow so much. Yeah, you reported it early. They had practice on Sunday to get themselves ready for the week a little bit early because the rules are a little bit different during yeah. a bowl week. Um, I think my question is, you, you mentioned how they figure out they figured out how to kind of use him a little bit more. Do you think he's made that big jump as well um, based off of just how they're using him, or do you think he's actually proved a lot as well? He's proved. I mean, look at Carson Beck from week one to week 12. This is a guy who, uh, as he progressed, he got better. I remember games two, three, four, there are a lot of people going, well, I don't know if Carson Beck's the guy. I mean, there's, even though he's throwing for like 275 yards, there were no wow passes. There were mm -hmm. no wow plays. And he was missing some guys deep. And to, to this point, still hasn't hit a lot of deep passes. But uh, he's been nothing but meticulous, methodical. I think at the Auburn game that uh, in the second half, was really Carson Beck's coming out party. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, he has just been uh, one of the best quarterbacks in America. I mean, he's in the top six or seven in the Heisman uh, talk, if you will. Uh, he's one of the only quarterbacks to ever throw for 250-plus yards per game through the first 11 games of his career. Very few interceptions. Crazy high completion percentage. Right. But Carson Beck, week 10, 11, 12, is a much better quarterback than one, two, and three. It's the same thing with Jalen Milrow. You can't look at the, t the beginning of the season and where they are now and say they're the same guys. Now, obviously, every team in the country improves quite a bit, but it you mentioned it. Georgia, or Alabama is one of the hottest teams in America yeah. right now. There's a lot of people beating the drum to try and get them into the college football playoff if they beat Georgia this upcoming weekend. Um, where do you think this group overall has improved? Or do you think a lot of it's just back based on the fact the quarterback play has improved at a tremendous rate? That, that's a lot of it. It was the offense. The defense has been fantastic. They've... Uh... Uh, if you look in the rankings, where does Alabama stack up on their defense? Where did they stack, stack on third down percentages, fourth down percentages, stopping teams? They're right there with Georgia. Mm. Uh, takeaways, they're actually a little bit better than Georgia. This is a team. I think Georgia's a zero for the year on takeaways. Alabama's better than that. Uh, offensively, was that was like the one sticking point. Now that's fixed. And if I'm looking at uh, the other teams that are going to make it into the playoffs, we would say, hey, let's say Oregon gets in and FSU gets in and Michigan gets in. I'm taking Alabama over all those teams. So mm. to me, this game, this upcoming game between Georgia and Alabama is really for the national championship. Whoever wins gets in. I, I don't think it's a question. Uh, and I think this will be the toughest game for either one of those. And I, I, maybe it's uh, arrogant to say that, you know, Michigan won't be as tough, but these two teams are so similar and effective offenses and stifling defenses that I think that uh – I will, they will be favored, I think, over anybody they face in the playoffs. Look, and it's classic Alabama, Georgia, where you've just got a million guys that are going to probably be in the NFL in the next couple of yeah. years. Um, obviously, this game, uh, they played in the national championship game two years ago, and there was a lot of questions about how um, this game doesn't mean anything in comparison to that game. Silly question. The fact I mean, that, yeah, I mean, why, why bring it up? It makes no sense. It, it's, it's, you're talking to guys who are starters who may not have even played in that game. Mm -hmm. Completely different offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. It's the, the jerseys were the same. Some of the same guys were out there barely, but it's not. It's it has zero effect. In that game, for three quarters, Georgia played terrible. 
Mm-hmm. They had a great fourth quarter, and uh, Nick Saban said, hey, they came on the last 10, 11 minutes of that game that was completely different. I could see this a sort of similar thing this week in that uh, each team will go on a run, almost like basketball, and which team can withstand it. And that has nothing to do with two years ago. Right. So, maybe, maybe mentally the fact that you finally beaten them matters. But not, no Georgia guy's even going to say that. You're like, oh, yeah, well, no, we're in their heads now. That's not coming up. So I, I don't even understand that line of questioning. Though it's interesting, though, the one line of question I thought we'd get, which we actually didn't get a question on, is the relationship between Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. Because um, we feel like that happens every single time they played. Nobody actually asked that question this time. But naturally, there is that question in, in, involved with all this. Um, well, that was asked a lot on the teleconference they had yesterday. Copy. you know, And uh, I think – you just know that if you ask Kirby about Nick Saban, he's going to say very nice things, and inside he's rolling his eyes. You know, they are peas in a pod. Their philosophy is the same. They like to take away what you do best and make you win, beat them with what you do least effectively. So it's uh, two very similar mindsets, two very similar teams coming into this, and two guys who uh, respect each other but really, really want to win. Right. Uh, last three years, uh, Georgia, 12-0 and in the regular season. They've run a, a bunch of games in a row at this wow. point. I think it was numbers 29 now. Um, where do you kind of see this team in, when you compare them the last two times and head into an SEC championship game? Of course, two years ago, lost to Alabama. Last year, beat LSU. Going into this game, how are they maybe differing from the last two times they went in? If the offense was healthy, if Brock Bowers was healthy, if Ladd McConkey was healthy, if Ra-Ra Thomas was healthy, if Tate Rattlers was healthy, four starters. Mm-hmm then I would say this offense is better than the previous two offenses. And that's not taking that away, away from Stetson uh, Bennett and the stuff that he and his offensive guys were able to do, but that offensive line is solid. Right. And they, I mean, when they're healthy, they have seven guys who can play. Yeah, and Most, how often does that happen in college football? It, it, it doesn't. Never. You know, you've got a first-round tackle in Amarius Mims, uh, uh, Ernest Green on the other side, uh, a freshman. You mm-hmm. know, he's, he's playing left tackle as a freshman. In the it, SEC. It, it, mind-boggling. Uh, Tate Ratledge, you know, Cedric Van Pran, an All-American center. Great offensive line. Kendall Milton's running as good as anybody's run the last few years. What, they, what Georgia doesn't have, though, is the same defense. That defense is not as good as the last two years. The secondary is as good. Secondary is fantastic. But you don't have the guys up front, and you saw that in the Tech game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've seen that when teams, when teams go to the edge. You just don't have the Jalen Carters, the Devontae Wyatts, you know, the Jordan Davises, the – uh, Trayvon Walker, those guys are gone, and it's it's showing in the defensive front. So that's this team is not as good as the previous two. They've had a little bit easier schedule, although it's gotten tough lately. But they're still good enough, even beat up, right. to go 12 and 0. So if you can get everybody healthy, and they can work out some stuff on defense. I mean, uh, J- Dumas Johnson, you're starting inside linebacker. You played two true freshmen against Georgia Tech at inside linebacker. Guys, they were in high school last year. Right. So if, if you could be healthy, uh, even at middle and inside linebacker, uh, you'd feel much more comfortable facing Jalen Melrose. How about the uh, um, health on the offensive side of the football? Nationally, no Ra-Ra Thomas, no Lab McConkey, no Brock Bowers this last week. Do you think a chance to be able to have those guys come back? I expect Brock, Brock Bowers to play. Okay. I expect Tate Ratch to play. Okay. So you get your uh, starting right guard back. Rara Thomas, I uh, would not expect him at this point. Lad McConkey, though, is the biggest question mark. Uh, right now, I mean, he's telling people he's going to play, but we'll see. Uh, it's just he's had some medical issues. And, again, we've only seen uh, Lad and Brock Bowers t- together, maybe not even, I don't think two full games. Hmm. But when they are together and they're stacked up on the same side of the field and you're putting those uh, safeties, you know, in conflict, who, who are you covering? And those guys go sit out and they hit a flag route or they go to the open middle of the field, you know, on a crossing pattern. It's just an absolute nightmare to try to stop them. So if the Georgia could get those guys back, it would be huge against Alabama. All right, so I guess we're heading into the game now. Um, I guess what does Georgia need to do to get it done and lock down another SEC title and get over, once again, this Alabama hump that nobody wants to talk about? Figure out a way to stop Milrow, mm-hmm. first and foremost. you got to stop the run. Uh, they've got a great offensive line. Uh, look at Proctor out there, another young guy, a freshman who's doing the same thing. Uh, stop the running attack of Alabama, stop the quarterback runs, stop the scrambles, contain him, make him beat you with his arm, which he can do, mm-hmm. but do not give them more drives than what you get. In other words, don't turn the ball over. If you have four drives in the first half and they have six drives, you've lost this game. Uh, if they, at the end of it, if they are plus two in turnovers, which we saw with Georgia Tech, uh, Georgia gave them the ball twice, he scored two touchdowns on it. The game was a lot closer than anybody expected. 
So protect the ball at all costs. You got to make good decisions, and you have to be able to run it. Uh, Dallas Turner is going to try to stop you, but if you can run the ball, control the clock, uh, move it. Get, don't get behind the chains. Don't let them pin their ears back and come after you. Again, the exact same thing you say about Georgia. That's right. why these two teams are so very eerily similar. Georgia versus Alabama this upcoming week in the SEC championship game. Of course, it is championship week, Roddy. Um, what else are you kind of watching out for these other games that get played this weekend? Are there are other games. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching that Florida State game because I think if Florida State loses, then they're out. You know, So that makes it a little bit easier maybe for Georgia or Alabama with a loss to get in. So you're going to be watching some of the other ones to see, uh, you know, I doubt Michigan loses to Iowa. I don't see that happening at no. all. They're, they're heavy favorites in that one. And uh, I, 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 you just kind of watch to see if anybody else can maybe slip up on championship weekend. Maybe Texas. Again, I don't see that one happening. Mm -hmm. But if anybody else loses, that makes it uh, a better likelihood of Georgia, or Georgia and Alabama both being able to get in. That would be an insane situation if that happened. It would. Oh, my gosh. And the country would be against it because it's a look we saw this a couple of years ago, and they didn't like seeing uh, two uh, Big Ten teams in there last year. They don't mm -hmm. like to see two from the same conference. So it's against it. But if the right teams lose, then they say, here are the four best teams. If Alabama beats Georgia, they're beating the two-time national champion. Mm -hmm. They should get in. If Georgia has, plays a close game and loses you know, against Alabama, they're like, look, th these, they're the two-time national champions. They've been number one most of the year especially in the rankings, you know, and, and even in the college football rankings, we have number one. You're going to drop them to five, six, or seven right. for losing to Alabama. So I can see a situation where even though the America doesn't want to see two teams from the SEC, the committee's like, well, here are four best teams, and right. two of them from the SEC. Right, you mentioned that all eyes are going to be on this game this upcoming weekend, yeah. Alabama versus Georgia at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Four o'clock kickoff. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We'll see you guys there.